Good morning and welcome to Palestine United Methodist Church. Happy Resurrection Sunday, happy Easter Sunday, happy day of the Lord. And we're so glad that you could be with us and those that are with us this morning, we're just thrilled to death that y'all can be here. It seems so strange that last year we couldn't even come to church on Easter and here we are being able to come back this Easter Sunday. So feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, got a few announcements, uh, and I know I say this every single time, but whenever there's a need, this church absolutely. I mean, look, look at that, look at all of that, and um, I know Christmas or Advent. It it took two vehicles. We may have to have three vehicles this time. <laughs> But uh, I know every bit of it is going to be, is, is just going to be so appreciated. And I thank you for what you do outside of this church. I thank you for what you do inside this church. But it's more important what we do outside the church. And um, I, I just really appreciate the outpouring that everybody has, has given. Wednesday night... Um, We'll start a new series. It's Max Lucado's Life Lessons from Genesis, and that'll be at 6.30 p.m. every Wednesday, and um, it'll be only on Facebook. And um, then we're going to do outside services whenever the weather permits. And looking at next Sunday, it looks like there might be rain that morning, and so you know we'll just kind of play it a week at the time and see. And um, April 18th, we'll have PPR board meeting. That'll be right after our worship service. Are there any other announcements? We'll be having communion um, toward the end of the service. And so if anybody is watching from home and you'd like to have your elements ready, you can go ahead and do that. Let's bow. Father, we thank you for this glorious day that we can come to church together and we can remember and we can recognize the resurrection that not only took place um, in Christ, but the resurrection through him that takes place in each of us. Thank you for your plan. Thank you for your love. And thank you for being with us this morning as we come this day to worship you. Fill us with everything you know that we need, and send us out in your name, in your spirit, to serve as you would have us do. I ask this in his name. Amen. Our call to worship is Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and then 14 through 24. Verses 1 and 2, and then 14 through 24. And this is very similar to last week. In fact, it's the same psalm. Some of the verses are different. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. And then at verse 14. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live. And recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day 
that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And Larry's going to come and read scripture for us this morning. Lead us in the Apostles' Creed and the Gloria Petri. Happy Easter, everyone. Okay, please join me in the scripture reading. First Corinthians fifteen, one through eleven. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I have received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God was that with me, was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of God for the people of God, and all the people said, thanks be to God. Uh, please join me in um, the Apostles' Creed, page 881. I believe in the God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in reciting the words of Gloria Patri. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We've come to the time where we offer our prayers um, for concerns, and we offer also offer our thanks for the joys that we have received. Does anybody have any concerns they'd like to share? Tanya Walker family. Anyone else? Elaine Murphy family. Um, Douglas Hammond family and uh, anyone that was caught up in the floods that we had last weekend and that includes anyone that had damage to their homes or lost their homes from that. Um, do we have any joy? Well, I've, I've got a, another concern. Um, <clears throat> a friend of mine, pastor friend of mine, I think I've told y'all about her before, um, 
we met on a trip to Israel, and she's younger than my children, <laughs> but we just kind of had a bond, and um, she's she now has a a child that is special needs child, and Olivia's about 10. I know we've had her on the prayer list before, but Becky's just had a really tough, tough week. Um, she sent me a Facebook message, and it... Uh, Olivia is having bleeding issues, and they don't know where it's from. And so she spent Thursday and Friday in the emergency Thursday and Friday in the emergency room. Her grandmother also has passed, and Becky lives in Ohio. Her grandmother's burial and service was here in uh, Tennessee, in East Tennessee. So. She's had a lot on her in just a short amount of time. They'll be going back to the hospital tomorrow for additional testing to find out what is going on. And being special needs, Olivia doesn't understand a lot when it comes to testing and different things that happen. And I think I had told you all about, you know, back in the summer or maybe a year ago or so when she was having to be she was having to be tested for the coronavirus. And, you know, they stick the thing up her nose, and she just absolutely, you know, because she didn't understand what was going on. So prayers for Olivia and prayers for Becky, her mom, because that's a lot. I mean, it, it's hard enough to lose a loved one, but then to be in fear of what's going on with your child. And... Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, I want to read part of what she wrote to me. <clears throat> um, where did it go? Olivia started losing blood. We don't know where it's coming from. They can't figure it out. Thursday and Friday in the ER. Um, not sure what the plan is. I know you and the people of your church are bold prayers. She feels y'all's prayers when you pray. This has terrified me as to what the problem truly is. So, I thank you for your prayers for Becky and Olivia very much. They're joys we'd like to share. Look at this. <laughs> and that, that's a joy. That's great. Tim, Tim's had to let go of Mr. Magoo. <laughs> that's good. It's good to see Rita here this morning. Rita, I always love seeing you, but it's good to see you here. And everybody else. I mean, this is great. Barbara Allen. It's good to see Barbara Allen here. And it's it's the, the, the better thing is that Barbara's feeling better. And and Ricky's feeling some better. But he's starting on his fifth round of antibiotics for pneumonia. Started them today, is that right? So They're, they're just sticking real close at home because neither one of them want to get COVID. And so they're just staying real close at home, which, you know, a lot of people are. And she's, she doesn't like to wear a face mask, as does Bonnie doesn't like to wear one, and I think Janice doesn't like to wear one. And I mean that's that's what, it's, for some people it it's a lot harder for them to breathe wearing one, and it's almost like you're claustrophobic and you're just going to jump out of your skin. So. 
Oh, uh, Stacy. Oh, okay. That's our neighbor. Okay. Our neighbor across the street's father um, had a, they, they had a death in the family. It's her father's brother-in-law. And then our other next-door neighbor has not birthed a baby yet that we know of because I think the town crier would have been over knocking on our windows. <laughs> Mama says... <laughs> So, prayers for Kate. Mm. It'd be cool if it was today. Real cool. Any other concerns or joys? Yes, ma'am. Yesterday, Yesterday was beautiful. Today's going to be even better. Yeah. And it should be. And it should be. Mm -hmm. and it should be. No week, a whole week. Well, I think it's supposed to rain, what, Wednesday? as a 30% chance, Thursday or 40, I don't know, something like that. Like We're going to get a sprinkle. Yeah. Are you done with all the neighbor stuff? I mean, I know there's like several kinds of neighbor. Yeah, no. You still got... We still got what dogwood, blackberry. Um, so yeah, it, it'll go on. This can go on till the end of May. Something like that. I think I, I was reading something that said put your britches on, <laughs> winter something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I guess that means going from shorts to you got to get your britches back on. Let's bow. Gracious God, we are totally amazed and stand in awe that you could even love us enough that we are even, that, that we even warrant your love to provide for us a permanent connection to you. You are a God of wonders. You are a God of majesty. You are a God that restores what's been lost. You're a God that can bring new life from old, create beauty from sin and ugliness, and offer healing and hope where there only appears to be sickness and death. Your power continues to work in our lives and in our world. Father, set our hearts on fire and open our eyes that we can see your presence in each and every person that we can see you in each situation and that we can see you in every place that we go. Lead and guide us with your words. Help our actions and our steps always bring glory to you. Father, today, you've heard the names that have been called out. You know the ones that are on our prayer list, and more importantly, you know the, the ones that we hold deep inside of us. Father, we lift up those who are in grief. <clears throat> we lift up others that may be having relationship problems. Others who have illnesses of various kinds. We lift up those that feel lost, 
that don't know you. We lift up those that have addictions and so many other things. And Father, we lift up all of this and we place it in your arms because we know there that your love will surround it, your comfort will be with it, and your peace will abide. I ask all this in Christ's name. He taught his disciples to pray most perfectly by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just as I am, just as we all are, that's why he came, and that's what he did, what he did. Scripture this morning is from the 20th chapter of John, 
verses 1 through 18. It's John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, went in. And he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, She bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. She told them that he had said these things to her. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his words. Sometimes... I think we read the Bible all wrong. I just really think we read it all wrong. You know, we, we go from time to time and we seek out scripture that will bring us hope or bring us peace. Sometimes we read it and don't really understand what it's saying. So I want to do things a little bit different today. It's Easter. It's okay for a change. That's what Easter is all about anyway. Today, let's place ourselves really in the story. You know, I know when we were all children, we used to pretend, and some of us are still kind of children today and still pretend about some things, but just pretend that you are there, that you are back there. Just pretend that you are. I can read the scripture again, but think about that story that you just heard. Where are you? When you hear it, are you with Mary Magdalene? Are you with Peter? Who are you with? So just imagine, just imagine with me You're one of the disciples. You wake up in a cold sweat. You were there that Friday. You were there Thursday when they took him away. You were there 
when the betrayal happened, when Judas had sold him out, you were there. Friday comes. Your mentor, your teacher, your friend has died a horrible death. And you know there's no return. You know your dreams. You know the future. Everything that you had hoped for is gone. Because this man whom you loved is dead. You were there. You saw. You were horrified. It didn't matter how many times you shouted Jesus has done nothing wrong. The shouts of crucify him, crucify him, drowned out any noise that you made. You watched him beaten. You watched as he was whipped. You saw the crown that was made of thorns being pressed down into his forehead and the blood that trickled down from that. You watched as he carried his own cross to be nailed to, up to Golgotha. You watched as soldiers took his hands and held him down while they nailed nails in his hands and his feet. And then you watched as they lifted up that heavy cross with him on it, and they dropped it down into that stand, and you could hear the noise that it made as it went down in that stand. Father, forgive them. And then his last words, it is finished. All hope was gone. You go home in tears. You get in bed and cry. Three days later, the sun is shining and you're wondering why. You have no hope. It's gone. And all of a sudden, there's a knock on the door. Who in the world could be coming to see you? Who could be coming? And then you hear this voice. He's alive. He's alive. Come and see, he's alive. And you think, wait a minute. I've got to be hearing things. But then for a split second, there's that hope that rushes back into you. And you go and you answer the door, and it's Mary Magdalene. She's there, and she's got, I mean, what comes out of her mouth is astonishing. He's alive. The Lord has risen. He's risen. I've seen him. I've talked to him. You can't believe it. You literally cannot believe it. So you run out. You pass her, you run out. You've got to go see it for yourself because you're not going to believe until you see it. Like the others, you stick your head in that dark, dank, dingy tomb and you realize that it is true. He has risen. all the sadness of Jesus' death on the cross, all the crushing feelings that you had, all the thoughts of the future never being the same, all the thoughts of his death leave, and it's returned or it's replaced with a resurrection story.
anything that was shattered has now come full circle because of him. All the darkness has gone. There's purpose. There's hope. And the tomb is empty. You know, if the story of Jesus ended on the cross, hope would have died with him, but it didn't. Without the resurrection, following Jesus would be pointless. Billy Graham once said, the cross shows the seriousness of our sin, but it also shows the immeasurable love of God. Easter is Jesus coming to earth to be one of us, being nailed on the cross. For us, he did it on behalf of us. Our sins were nailed on that cross, past, present, future, because God knows we're going to commit more. But that's the, pers- that's the purpose of Christ. Past, present, future sins nailed on that cross so that we would have a lifeline to God Almighty. That's a love that we can never duplicate on this earth. Ever. Jesus defeated death because prior to the resurrection, prior to our believing in the resurrection, we're dead. Experiencing the new life of Christ is life. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He came to set the captives free and to break the power of sin. He came to bear the punishment of our sin. And he came to die on the cross in our place. Jesus came. And there were witnesses. Jesus came. There were witnesses to his death. Jesus came. And there were witnesses to his resurrection. Or did the resurrection really happen? Some believe, some don't. Could it have been fact or fiction? Could it have just been a cruel joke? How do you know for sure? Where is the evidence that you can say without a doubt that he was resurrected? How has your life changed because it was resurrected? How do you go and witness the resurrection? We go through Lent in darkness. We come to Good Friday in darkness. We go through every day of our life. And some of those days we feel like we ourselves are in a tomb. Where have we seen his light? Where have we seen the light of his resurrection in our lives. What are our stories? And who today is going to get up right here and testify to the truth that Christ is alive 
and that the resurrection is real. Anybody? The pulpit is yours. I know that he lives because I'm here and he has given me the strength to get through the many things that I have. And I know that he'll continue to be with me through all the things that I'll face in the future. You all know my story. About four years ago, from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, was a whirlwind of worry and fear. They found a tumor on my ovary, and every doctor I went to, three doctors within that week, they said, it looks like it's cancer. They don't tell you. We think it's cancer unless they're pretty sure. I was operated on Good Friday. Before that, when they told me, you know, I, when you're told something like that, you're just stunned. And I, I, I laid it at his feet. And I said, whatever your will is, Thy will be done. I know you have me. Thy will be done. And I was operated on Good Friday, and I walked through those doors on Easter Sunday. They told me it was benign, and I know, I know he healed me. And I am so grateful. I am... I'm sad by all the years that I was there, but I really wasn't there for him. Sometimes it takes facing something terrible for you to wake up and realize that you can't do it alone, that you need him. So I... I stand here with thankfulness in my heart, and I praise his holy name. And hallelujah, he has risen. I've said, I think I've said this before, but when I walked through those doors over two years ago, I was a dead man walking, literally a dead man walking. And because of, of, of God's transformation in me and this church, you, I live the most joyous life today that a person could live. I live every day knowing that I have been blessed beyond belief, and I truly want to share that every day of my life. Today is the culmination of that. And I thank you and I thank God for all that he's doing and done for me.
Good morning. morning. See if I can get through this. I know God lives because I'm here standing in front of you. According to everything I've heard, I shouldn't be standing here. I'm of a certain age in society, walking around in the world the last few months. I survived COVID. I had it a few months ago. And the real world just looked at me and went, you go on home and stay in the house, and if you get worse, go to hospital, and if you die, they'll find you. Well, I neither one of those things happened. I actually got better and got through it, and I believe it was God. I prayed a lot because there wasn't any other thing to do but to do that. You had to, and I believe that saved me. Praise God for that. coming up here on behalf of my husband because he won't come up here. I really thank God that he didn't let you go. From everything I've heard, You shouldn't be here. I'm so glad you are. We're glad you're here, honey. For each and every one of you on uh, Facebook, I want to uh, tell you that the Lord lives, and I I have uh, many miracles from him that God gave me the strength to walk up here and talk to y'all, but each and every one of y'all, I want to praise each and every one of y'all that's sick, that's bedridden, And every day I get up, I pray for the Lord in my life and the ones that are in this church and each and every church around the world because it's getting so bad that people are turning. We're coming to you, not away from you, And the Lord has risen, and he will be here forever. And he will take care of you. Just pray. I have a friend that has been classified with cancer. It's Mr. Jeff Trauber. And I want to tell you that we're praying for you in this church. And Jesus has risen, and he will risen again. Amen. Good morning. As you all know, I did have a pretty bad incident with my heart. had a bad heart attack. And... uh, I know he's alive because I'm alive. He wasn't through me yet, so let's see what happens. Amen, Timothy. Thank you. Amen. (laughs) There is victory in Jesus. Yes, there is. Anyone else?
thank you all for opening up your hearts and sharing that he is alive, because yes, indeed, he is alive. Every day, every single day, you can wake up, whether we're in a dark tomb or whether we're having a mountaintop experience, we can wake up, we can look up, and we can all remember that God was with us in the blood and the tears that maybe we've shed, but we know that he was with Christ. We know that he was placed on that cross out of nothing more than love. We know that he did all of that because we are all broken and he loved us enough to care that much. It's not a joke. It's not a prank. He lives. He truly lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think since everybody sits in the same pew, we'll be safe to open up the hymnals because we'll, we'll be the only ones using the ones that that are there. Rita, you've got your spot your spot marked right there, right? <laughs> and Barbara, that's been that's been your spot for a while. Everybody else is you know where they need to be. <laughs> if you would turn to page twelve. And what I'm going to read um, in a little while, if, if the words change, it's nothing that will change for y'all. Just keep following along. <clears throat> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And on page 13, under the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You discovered you delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land of flowing, to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the, of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and sharing of the cup. And also in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And if you would, if there's like a family, if you would come and, and just pick up um, the communion. This is the body of Christ broken for you.
and the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us today at Palestine, and we hope you have a very blessed Resurrection Day, and the rest of your week and your life will be lifted up. Um, we'll be back again next Sunday morning, as far as I know, unless he comes back to take us all with him. But um, see you next Sunday at 930. If you'd like to join us Wednesday for the study, please do so. 630 Facebook Live on, on, on our page. To receive the benediction, go forth in peace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <clears throat>